Good afternoon. My name is Sue Mannion and I'm the manager of the Student Accommodation Office and I would like to welcome you all to our introduction to private housing presentation. We know that the last couple of years have been a challenge for you all, with the majority of you carrying out your studies sitting in your room. But we hope that the presentation today will help with the transition of moving from your halls to the next exciting part of your university journey by guiding you through the steps you will need to take on your journey to renting accommodation in the private sector. My team will be available throughout the presentation to answer your questions that are in the chat and after the presentation where we can answer some of your queries live. Hopefully the presentation will answer many of the concerns you may have. If you see a question in the chat, please like the question so that this will then let us know what the most popular subjects are. Now let's move on to why we're here. So the majority of you probably live in halls, so moving into private accommodation will be new to most of you. We are aware that moving from halls into the private sector can be somewhat daunting, and we hope that this talk will provide some answers to questions you may have, eliminate anxieties, and guide you through the housing journey you will most likely be taking. But don't worry about taking in all the information at once. This presentation will be available online and we're going to be carrying out the second half of this presentation in May, but more about that later. So what are we going to talk to you about? As you can see from the slide, <clears throat> this would be the whole journey that you would be taking. However, we will talk to you about the first part of your journey from who to live with, through to where and when to look, what type of accommodation is out there and how much it's going to cost. So let's think about your search timeline. Whilst you may have friends at other universities that have already found a house for next year, the London housing market does operate slightly differently. If you do start house hunting too early, estate agents more often than not will ask you to pay rent for the period the property is vacant and they will expect you to move in within a few weeks of viewing and accepting that accommodation. This may then cause issues if you don't plan on moving in until September or are wishing to go home or on holiday over the summer. However, some landlords who are registered on the Imperial Home Solutions site will let you view the accommodation now and start the contract in September. So we're now in March, so what should you do first and over the next couple of months? Do your research before you jump into the search process. Arming yourself with essential knowledge on what you're looking for, what your budget is and where you want to live will not only ensure you find the ideal property, but will help to avoid being scammed or pressured into a decision. March, April, May, attend our annual housing event. Well done, you've passed the first test. Remember to sign up to our events during May, which will help you understand more about contracts and inventories. You don't want to end up being stuck in a contract and owing money. June, July and August, you still have plenty of time to find your new home. Actually, this is a really good time to start your private housing search. Estate agents will have a better idea of availability for September and October. September, left it to the last minute. Don't worry, there's still property available. October, November, December, move in, relax and start enjoying the next part of your university journey. So what should you do first? Who are you going to live with? <clears throat> the first step in your private housing journey will be to decide on who you would like to live with. Some of you may decide to live alone, but for the majority of you moving into the private sector, small groups will be formed. Consider the following factors before renting together. Who do you really want to live with next year? Do you already know? Choosing the right flatmate is a very important decision as part of your journey. We know that for the last couple of years it has been difficult to form groups due to the majority of you being in your rooms or still at home working remotely. But firstly, be honest about yourself 
and what you want. Don't pretend to be a party animal if realistically you would rather stay in and go to bed at nine o'clock. Be certain about the type of personalities you would like to live with. That way you can be sure to find like-minded people which will in turn hopefully lead to a much more positive and happier living environment. Like I said, think about the person you are. Are you at the excessively tidy type that hates even the slightest speck of dust? Or do you even know what a vacuum is? People have differing standards as to what they consider as tidy. A noise, are you a lively soul who is looking to have fun and party or are you hoping to live in a state of peace and quiet? And your sleeping patterns. If you are unaware of the world existing prior to midday, it could be problematic if you choose to live with an early riser. And friends and partners. Everybody likes a visitor and having your friends or partners stay over. However, consider how frequent this may be, particularly if they aren't paying rent and are yet using and utilising the household resources. And have you got a comparable income? Don't let money get in the way of a friendship. Budgeting can affect not only the type of property you rent and where you live, but also your social life. It could be very isolating if you couldn't afford to be out as often as the rest of your housemates. And if you have a particular diet, think about how you'll feel sharing a house with people who may be cooking dishes that you really don't like. And the length of stay. Are you wanting to rent a property during the whole of the academic year, which is basically nine months? Or do some of you intend to stay all year? What do your other housemates want to do? The majority of landlords will want you to sign a 12 month tenancy or longer. These are all the questions you should be asking yourself. To help you with this, don't forget to check out the private housing guide. It has some great tips for living together. Our general advice is that before choosing to move in with people, have a frank discussion about your habits, perhaps establish a basic set of principles so you are under no illusions about what you or others expect from a house share. Because once you have signed a contract, it will be very difficult to get out of it at a later date. So we know that most of you are concerned about finding people to live with for next year and our team have created a Yammer group called Find a Flatmate, where you will have the chance to talk with fellow students who are also searching for flatmates. We will provide an opportunities for you to discuss with students in the group and feel free to post in this to get to know other students, keeping in mind that the group will be monitored by my team, so please be respectful. We will also be hosting flatmate events in the coming months, so keep an eye out for these and a link will be provided in the chat for you to request to join the group and let the flatmate finding begin. I'm now going to hand you over to Michael, who is the Senior Student Accommodation Office Advisor. Michael. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> so where to look? While there are many places to look for accommodation, most of you will do your searching online. There are plenty of websites that advertise spare rooms or available flats, but it's worth looking for sites and listings that specifically cater to students, such as Imperial Home Solutions. Beginning your property search in London can be slightly daunting. Imperial Home Solutions has been created as a secure site for Imperial students only. It gives you access to a variety of housing options all centred in one place. The website has listings for over 400 private landlords, as well as contact details for a range of private hall providers and estate agents, a number of whom will be exhibiting at our March event. There is also a student message board where you can get in touch with other students looking for accommodation or housemates to live with. All of the landlords and agents advertising on Imperial Home Solutions are required to give contact information and copies of required safety documentation, 
such as gas safety certificates. Alongside this, a large number of the private landlords advertising on Imperial Home Solutions have been working closely with the college for a number of years and are very familiar with Imperial students and their housing needs. The website will be updated throughout the coming months with the latest news and useful articles to help you in your property search. So types of accommodation. <clears throat> the next step is to decide what type of accommodation you like. This is directly influenced by the number of people you want to live with and your budget. The first example we'll look at is a room in a shared house or flat. If there is a group of four or more of you, then the chances are you'll be looking for a house share. This can be a cheaper way to rent accommodation as you can spread the cost of the bills between you. If there is a group of you renting together, some landlords will allow you to use the living room as a bedroom, which will cut down costs as there, as there are more of you sharing. If you take up that option, make sure you have a larger uh, kitchen for communal space. Alternatively, you may wish to live alone, in which case you'll be looking at a studio or bed sit. However, again, remember that you'll be the only one paying the rent and bills, so ensure you factor this into your budget. Other options are to look at living with a resident landlord, so essentially lodging. You'd be signing a different type of agreement called a license, which is only a permission to occupy and does not give you the same security as a tenancy agreement. However, this may be good for some of you, as it can be cheaper, or alternatively, you could rep return to purpose-built student halls. There are a number of private hall providers in London. You may have met some of them, and you'll have the opportunity to see them again at our exhibition on the 17th of March. When deciding on the different types of accommodation with your flatmates, you have to be realistic and may have to compromise. Unless you have a massive budget, you may not find the perfect property. You need to decide what's important for you and remember that you'll not be living in the properties forever, so you can be flexible. Check out our helpful find, a, find the right property flowchart to decide which is best for you. Choosing an area. Well, we've looked at the different types of accommodation you might like, but it's actually really important to think of where you might like to live. Are you happy to live in the city centre? or perhaps somewhere slightly more suburban and further afield. This map shows where most of our students live and it's also in our area guide that we've produced. We've calculated the average rent per week and travel options to South Kensington and White City campuses to help you choose an area which best suits your needs. We'd all like to live locally to the college, but you may have to live further out due to your budget. Once again, this is all about having to compromise to get the property you can afford. Have a think about the travel connections, amenities in the local area, and check out the area during the day and the evening. If you're going to the area in the evening, take a friend with you. Always think about your personal safety. In addition to the area guide, we've produced a number of online 60 second video clips of some of the more popular areas for our students. The videos can be viewed on the Student Accommodation Office web pages. Setting a budget. So you've decided who you'd like to live with. Now it's time to think about your budget. How much are you actually going to need to spend? Rent. This will be your major cost with Imperial students in the private sector paying anything from 175 to 250 pounds per person per week. Depending on how many there are in the group and the type of property you decide on. However, you'll also need to budget for other weekly costs. Utility bills, for example, water, gas, electricity, landline or mobile and internet costs. We estimate at approximately 30 to 35 pounds per person per week. Remember that you don't have to pay council tax, so please make sure you visit the Student Hub web pages to request a statement of registration 
and send this off to the local council when you move into private accommodation. And don't forget to set aside a budget for food. Shop together if you like the same thing. You may, you may also find it useful to start a kitty and share the costs for essential household items such as washing up liquid and washing powder. Travel. Remember to factor in the cost of travelling to and from college on the bus or train. As full time students, you'll be eligible for a 30% discount from TfL. And finally, socialising. Whether that be an evening out or a trip to the cinema, remember to set aside money for socialising. So depending on how many of you are sharing or whether you're renting alone, we estimate that you should budget for between 300 and 380 pounds per week. Please bear in mind that in deciding to live on your own, all costs will be significantly higher and you will be responsible solely for the bills. There may be charges if you want to replace one of your group midway through the tenancy. So you need to be prepared to pay in the region of 1600 to 2000 pounds per person before moving in. Fees and deposits. When you start to look for private accommodation, you'll need to think about the costs listed on this slide. A holding deposit. This is the amount of money that you pay to an agent to hold the property for you and for them not to rent to anyone else while your references are being checked. Um, the holding deposit will probably be non-refundable. So please be aware if you do pay a holding deposit and change your mind, you will lose the money that you have paid. So only pay the holding deposit once you are sure that you want to take the property. From the 1st of June 2019, a holding deposit can't be more than one week's rent. Moving on to the security deposit. Once you've agreed to take the property, the agent will want you to pay a security deposit, which in most cases will be five, will be five weeks rent. This is the money that the landlord agent will hold until the end of your tenancy. So to recap on fees and deposits, most of our students will be asked to pay one month's rent up front. However, if you don't have a UK based guarantor, please note that the agents can ask you to pay up to six months rent in advance. During the tenancy, you may be required to pay additional charges. Such as payment, uh, such as the. Um, payment of additional charges. Um, if you don't pay your rent on time, charges if you want to replace one of your group midway through the tenancy. You may you may find payments associated with early termination of the tenancy. And also repairs and um, if you know if you treat the property um, and neglect it or misuse it, you may be asked to pay for repairs. Many landlords and agents are now using different methods to showcase their properties. These include 360 degree tours, live video tours via WhatsApp, FaceTime or Skype. Whilst this goes some way to showcasing uh, the property, it's not a substitute for the real thing. We would strongly advise caution against paying a holding deposit or signing a contract for a property that you've not actually seen in person. We advise that you request an in-person tour so that you can see the property in real time. Make sure that any verbal promises that you get, such as additional furniture, get those in writing. With the listing of all restrictions, um, an in-person tour shouldn't be a problem now. When viewing a property, whether that be in person or virtually, try to keep a lookout for the points we've listed on this slide where possible. Is there enough furniture present for the number of people renting the property? Are there any signs of damp, mould or drafts? And does the kitchen have enough cooking facilities and storage? I'll now hand you back to Sue. Wow, thanks Michael. Thanks Michael. I have the good job of giving you some now some legal information. 
So what is a contract? So a contract is a legally binding document that both you and the landlord are agreed, agreeing to abide by. It's made up of various clauses and some of those clauses are what have been set by law. Others are obligations that the landlord wants you to agree to. However, once you've signed the contract, whatever is in the contract, you are bound by those terms and conditions. Remember, when you go to look at a property, if there is anything that you're not happy with or if you require additional furniture and the, the agent has said that's OK, that's fine. Remember to get it in writing. If an agreement is made between you and the landlord or the agent, this will then become part of the contract. There are two types of contract. One is in a short hold tenancy and the other is a license agreement. The most common is an assured or old tenancy and you'll be given this type of contract if you're renting the whole property, such as a studio or a larger self-contained flat or house. Remember, if you are a group or a couple, then you will be joint and severally liable to all the terms and conditions that are in that contract. You would normally sign a license agreement if you're going to live in the same property as the landlord. A license agreement still has terms and conditions that you must abide by, but it is much easier for the landlord to ask you to leave the property as a license agreement does not give you protection from eviction. It is only a permission to occupy. We would always recommend that you ask the agent or the landlord to add a break clause to your contract. This will allow you to leave without penalty after a set amount of time. And the pandemic has not changed the laws regarding ending tenancies. You will still be bound by the terms and conditions contained in your contract. Take your time to decide and if a doubt, contact the Student Accommodation Office. If you want to leave the accommodation and you do not have a break clause, the landlord could allow you to leave if you find another tenant to take over your obligation. Alternatively, there may be an end of tenancy clause, which means that the landlord or the agent will allow you to leave the accommodation, but you will have to pay a penalty. You will need to check your contract as this could be different for each agent or landlord. As Michael was saying to you earlier, from June 2019, the Tenant Fees Act became law and landlords are not permitted to make unnecessary charges. You cannot be charged for cleaning, although you will be expected to leave the property in the same condition as it was when you moved in. You will not have to pay for inventory check-ins or out, but I would advise you to check the inventory thoroughly when you move in. Take photos and advise the landlord or the agent as soon as possible about any discrepancies and remember to put this in writing. Also, when you leave the property, make sure you put all the items back in the same place they were when you moved in. The inventory clerk will not look for these and will mark them as missing and the landlord will charge you. Also, landlords and agents can only charge you one week's rent as a holding deposit and only up to five weeks rent as a security deposit and all these charges should be in the contract and displayed within the estate agent's office if you're going to rent your accommodation through an agent. Please check out the .gov website where there is a lot more information. One thing to consider when you visit an agent or a landlord is that they will ask you if you have the right to rent in the UK. In 2016, new legislation came into force that states that once you have found a property and have agreed to the terms and conditions with the agent or the landlord, they will require you to prove that you have the right to rent the accommodation. To prove this, they will ask you for a copy of your passport and or your visa. And if you check the website shown on the screen, it will give you a full list of documentation that can be used. As a result of COVID-19, <clears throat> excuse me, there are temporary changes to the way you can check documents. 
Read the guidance about the adjusted process, including how landlords can ask for documents digitally, making checks on a video call, and what to do if a tenant cannot provide any accepted documents. We would strongly advise not to send original copies of your documentation via email and do not allow agents or landlords to take your original documents away. If your landlord wishes to do this, we suggest that you copy the document yourself, show them the originals and then give them the copies. Again, the website provides lots of information on this. In addition to the right to rent legislation, another aspect to consider is whether you require a rent guarantor. If you're looking to rent accommodation in the UK and want to pay your rent on a monthly basis, then you will most likely require a rent guarantor. Rent guarantors are commonly used by landlords and accommodation providers to ensure that the new tenant will not default on payment of rent. A rent guarantor agrees to guarantee the payment of your rent to an agent or landlord in the event that you can't. This may be particularly useful for students being asked to make up front payments of six to 12 months rent in advance. Paying large sums of money in advance can be risky or leave you in a difficult position. For example, should you need to vacate the property early for any reason? By Imperial acting as your rent guarantor, you will be able to pay monthly and protect yourself from risks such as these. The Imperial Rent Guarantor Scheme allows Imperial College to act as a UK-based guarantor for all returning undergraduate students. And rent guarantees are done on an individual basis and cover accommodation up to the value of £250 per person per week. The scheme has been running now for about six years and we have had over 800 successful rent guarantees being put in place. The scheme will open again this year in April and you can find out more about the scheme by visiting the link displayed on the screen above. But some of you may think that you're not yet ready to have to deal with estate agents or private landlords and would love to prefer to live in a hall environment. Some private hall providers can be expensive and the accommodation tends to be studio apartments and these can be costly. However, we do have one hall of residence that's for returning students. Evening Gardens is in South Kensington, close to Gloucester Road Station. It's about a 15 minute walk from the South Ken campus. It's exclusively for returning undergraduates and it is on a 39 week contract for the next academic year. So more similar to what you would find in halls. There isn't a warden team at Evelyn, so students do live more independently, but residents, assistants and a 24 hour concierge service are on hand if you need assistance. You also have the convenience of having all the utility bills included, including internet and contents insurance, and there are a range of rooms available and the prices start at £182 per week, which compares quite favourably with private halls, which tend to be more expensive. This hall will also be open for the summer, so applications for the summer will open from the end of April and we will also start taking applications for October from May, so keep an eye out for further information. Obviously, Evelyn Gardens is quite small. It only has 250 beds and it is quite popular. So all applications will be on a first come, first serve basis. So let's recap. Flatmates, think carefully about who you would like to live with and agree on how much you can afford to pay for a property. Costs fees and deposits, make sure you are all aware of the cost for holding and security deposits. And looking for a property, make sure you all agree on the area. Go to visit at different times during the day. Look at the, uh, the local area. Will you feel safe coming back at night? 
and your contract. Make sure you read the contract. And remember, members of the student accommodation team will be able to check this for you. We're now going to show you a video uh, what we've already about what we've already spoken to you about and what we're going to talk to you about during May. Flatmates, you gotta love them. No, seriously, you do at least have to like them. It's also good to choose flatmates with the same schedules, budgets and priorities. So if you prefer, oh, I don't know, paying your rent on time and not setting fire to things, make sure your flatmates feel similarly. All that assured short old tenancy agreement can come back to bite you. With those boxes ticked, it's time to find a house. So, you've got your flatmates lined up, now for the house. There are various types of accommodation you could go for, but whatever you choose, make sure you go with an established estate agent. You can find a list of them, along with a cheeky offer or two at the Imperial Home Solutions site. Budget is your next consideration. Don't you just love being a responsible adult? Rent, bills, travel, and nothing says responsible adult like a spreadsheet. And finally, don't forget to check the area. That ensuite bathroom won't seem quite so appealing when you're stuck on a bus into uni from Zone 9. With all those boxes ticked, you can move on to paying your deposit. A holding deposit is the down payment you put on a property to secure it. The security deposit is the money that'll be held back if you decide to paint the walls black and break down the door when you forget your keys. But whatever you do, don't pay any money before you've actually viewed the place. Always worth checking there aren't any nasty surprises hidden away in there. And when you do pay the deposit, make sure your landlord gives you the prescribed information, proving it's being kept in a protected scheme. You should get this within 30 days of paying. That is, unless you're living with your landlord, you lucky thing. In which case, your deposit doesn't have to be protected. You can find out more about insurance and deposit protection on our website. At last, all the hard work has paid off. Hey. It's moving day. Hey. Uh, uh not so fast. Oh. You didn't think the work was done now, did you? Oh. <laughs> oh, you poor deluded fools. First, you need to make sure a check-in inventory is done. This is a list of everything in the property on the day you move in. It'll be compared to the check-out inventory. So make sure you can account for everything from the number of teaspoons to, well, the bigger stuff. If you want to be really safe, take your own photos of any damage in the property, no matter how small, so that you don't run the risk of being blamed for it when you leave. It's worth the effort to make sure you get your deposit back. It means you can sit back, relax, and enjoy your new home. So I hope you enjoyed that. That will just give you a little snip here of some of the things that we will talk to you about when we do our next presentation but we will be having an in-person exhibition this year on the 17th of March, and you'll be able to come along to the QTR, the Queen's Tower Room in South Kent, and meet estate agents, private hall providers, and other services that you may wish to use. So please check out the posters and book your slot. So we know that there's a lot to think about with private accommodation and we don't expect you to take everything in at once. So during the next couple of months, we're going to open the Yammer Group to help you find a flatmate. Keep an eye out for our weekly newsletters, which will give you more information on looking for accommodation. We're also going to have another talk to give you more information about contracts, inventories, and what to do if you need to leave the property early. And myself and the team will also be around all summer to answer any questions you may have or check any contracts that you're not sure of. And that just leaves me to say a big thank you to you all for coming to our introduction to private housing presentation. And this presentation will be available online. We would love to know what you think about the presentation today and the exhibition. And if you complete the form in, uh, via the link that is in the chat, you could win yourself a £100 Amazon voucher. 
So myself and my team will now hopefully be able to answer some of your questions. Thank you.